welcome back YouTube. We have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews. And here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number six. It will include all the changes I spotted in the month of August. So let's see what's new with Google Apps. But before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Let's start with the Google Camera app and if you are using version 7.5 on any Pixel device, your photos will be named in a different way. For example, here is a photo I took earlier and if you take a look at the name, you will see it's starting with PXL instead of the generic IMG and by this you will be able to identify the photos taken with the Pixel device a lot easier. Also when you use uh, the motion feature, you see here before the extension it says MP or motion photo. Uh, when you take uh, photos using night sight, it will say the word night at the end. And when you take portraits, it says here portrait dot cover. Dot cover means the photo with the blur effect. When you choose the normal one, the name will now be portrait dot original. Also, the portraits will not be saved in folders. They will be separated. Uh, the naming convention also applies to the videos. As you see here, the video says PXL as well. And that will make it a lot easier for you to manage your photos manually on a PC because you will be able to identify the photos you are looking for just from the name. Next, Google Photos, and it has a couple of changes. The first one is the reappearance of skip and rewind buttons in video playback. Uh, next, when you uh, try to attach a photo or send a photo from any app now you have the ability to choose a photo from your albums so when you tap on attach file and then go to the photos app you will see here i have a new section called albums so i can pick a photo from any album i want which is a lot easier sometimes next gmail and the new meet tab started to roll out more widely to a lot of people including myself under the Meet tab, you have two options at the top, either to create a new meeting or join a current one with a code. When you tap on New Meeting, you will get the option to uh, get a link to share with others, start an instant meeting or schedule one in Google Calendar. When you start a new meeting, it will open the Google Meet app, giving you the link to share with others. Uh, also, you can join a current meeting by tapping on Join with a code. Put the code in the text field and you are good to go. Next, Google Assistant and the first change is in the settings. As you see now, you have a long list of settings and instead of having them under different tabs, uh, the first category is called the popular settings, which are the most used uh, settings. Here you have you and the devices. Under you, you have the settings where you can change your information, your places, your people and so on. Under devices, you have the other smart devices from Google appearing here. Uh, then you have the long list of settings that includes everything that you can also uh, collapse by tapping on view less settings or expand by tapping on view all settings. There are also three new features created specifically for the school season. However, you can use them anytime if you want to. And the first one is called Family Bill. Here you can set a bill that can be triggered at a certain time. You can give it a name, let's say uh, uh, bedtime. And then choose the time when you want this bill to be triggered. Let's say I'm going to choose uh, 2 a.m. and then 46 to show you how it works. Set. And once the time comes, it will say bedtime on my uh, Google Home Mini. So let's give it a try. Bedtime. So here is how it works. You can also choose from the suggested bills. Here it says it's time for breakfast. You can add it straight away and, and put the timings yourself. Uh, put on your dinner pants, it's time to eat, and so on, right? Uh, but you need to have uh, a smart speaker or a smart display from Google to be able to use this feature. You can also set family bills using your voice by saying the magic word and then set a family bill with all the details required and it will be set automatically. Keep in mind that this feature will work if your Google Assistant is set to English in US, UK, Canada, Australia and India. The next feature is the ability to say to your Google Assistant start the school day 
and in this case your smart speakers will start playing school sounds and your smart lighting will flash in different colors so let's give that a try start the school day class is in session The next feature is the ability to broadcast a voice message to a specific speaker or room in your house instead of spreading it all over the place. For example, broadcast to my living room, it's bedtime. It's bedtime. In this case, my voice message will only play on the smart speakers in my living room without any impact on other speakers. Next, there is a new command called show me my day and this will show you the Google Assistant snapshot. Show me my day. Here you go. It will show you the snapshot that includes your future events if you want to take a look at them. Next, Google Home app. First, it supports dark theme and as you see, it looks stunning with the dark background and the colorful icons. Also, if you are using Android 11, you can add your Chromecast and smart speaker to the power menu. As you see here, I have my Google Home Mini. When I tap on it, I can change the volume, check what's playing, or I can cast my audio. Also, when it comes to Chromecast, you can uh, check your ambient back background. You can change it if you want to. You can cast your phone screen or personalize your ambient display. There are also a couple of new improvements. The first one is called persistent volume changes. So every time you restart your smart device, you still have the same volume set before, it will not reset to 100%. And the second one will allow you to control your smart devices, even if you are not on the same network. Next, Google Chrome. And now you will get a new interface for the autofill feature. Now you see it looks a lot better than before. You can either swipe up to get more options like manage passwords or you can dismiss it by swiping down and the keyboard will show up to write whatever you want. Next, Gboard. If you are using Android 11 and the latest beta version of Gboard like I do and you have your credit card details saved in Google Chrome, every time you're gonna try to put them online, you will see the suggested credit card numbers will appear in the keyboard itself and instead of showing on top of the text fields. It looks a lot better and it also works the same way with addresses you have saved in Google Chrome. Some users also found that it works with third-party apps like 1Password. So if you have a password saved in 1Password app, you might get the suggestions right here in the suggestions strip. Uh, but I couldn't try that on my phone because I don't use 1Password. Next, YouTube Music. And the first change is under Playlists. If you have a playlist, then scroll down to the bottom you will see a new section called suggestions. Here you will see a, a list of suggested songs similar to the ones you have in your playlist. If you want to add any of them, just tap on the plus sign, or if you want a new list of suggestions, tap on the refresh button and it will start suggesting even more songs for you. You can also activate collaboration on any of the playlists you have. Just tap on the edit button and make sure that your playlist is either public or unlisted then you will see the collaborate button turn it on when you tap on collaborate it will give you the switch to turn on collaboration then it will show you the link so you can share with others in this case people will be able to add more songs to your playlist if you want to the next change is under library and as you see the top section is now called recent activity instead of last played here it will show you the last uh, played song playlist or album uh, also, when you tap on the word recent activity, you will get the history of the individual songs you played on your phone. There is also a new option under settings called allow external devices to start playback. And it says here, for example, car Bluetooth and wired headsets. Next, Google Maps. Now you will see the traffic lights started to show up in certain areas. I couldn't locate any in my city but i had to pick a location in the usa and as you see here the traffic lights are showing next android auto and if you are using android auto for navigation if you have your phone in landscape mode you see now you have better visual experience because the bar at the bottom is no longer filling the whole screen so you can see a bigger portion of your maps while driving next google lens now it has a new filter called places 
This filter is dedicated for identifying buildings. It should give you better results because it can detect your location to narrow down the options based on where you are. Next, Google Duo. First, it will be able to show captions for your voice messages. And the second feature is the ability to cast your video call to your Chromecast. Also, Google Meet will be able to cast your meetings to Chromecast to enjoy the bigger screen. Next, if you are using the digital well-being, when you go to the bedtime, then customize. Here you have a new switch for the always on display. You can keep it on or turn it off during your bedtime. Next, if you are using the Google phone app on non-pixel devices, now there is a new option called the flip to silence, which means when you put your phone upside down, it will silence phone calls. Last but not least, the Pixel Buds 2 will now show under the Find My Device app. So that's pretty much it. Those are all the changes I managed to get my hands on when it comes to Google apps in August. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.